Hello and welcome to our October virtual opening. My name is Emma Wilson and delighted that you could join us. This month's feature artists are J. Rodney Dennis, Joanne Parent, Helen Lewis, and Jill Hoy. You'll hear more from them in a few moments. First, a few thank yous. Thank you to our artists who continue to inspire and engage, and thank you to our clients who continue to support the arts and make this all possible. So it's October in Maine. It's officially leaf peeping season is, is beginning, and it's such a magical time here. We hope that you'll stop in if you're in the area to see us. And now I'd like to introduce artist J. Rodney Dennis. American painter, Rodney was born in Washington, D.C. He was exposed to museum quality paintings and sculptures beginning at a very early age at the Smithsonian Institution. There, he was given the opportunity to be invited in a special drawing and painting workshop where one of his pieces was retained. Realizing that Rodney possessed unusual talent and skill in drawing and painting, as well as a keen sense of observation, he began receiving professional art instruction from a local portrait artist by the age of 14. After pursuing his interest in the arts throughout his childhood, he went on to earn an associate's degree in visual communication. Rod pursued both commercial illustration as well as art direction and graphic design for Fortune 100 companies before he went on to train under nationally known portraitist Danny Dawson. Then he continued his studies at the Bucks County Classical Arts Center, an atelier in Pennsylvania, and then to the Academy of Realist Art in Boston. This special training at the Academy of Realist Art provided him with a unique opportunity to master one of the world's longest and most important artistic traditions, an academic approach to observing and rendering nature accurately while learning the craft of painting using the techniques of the old masters. This training traces itself from the very beginnings of the French Academy in the 18th century. Please welcome artist J. Rodney Dennis. Hi, uh, J. Rodney Dennis. I'm, I'm one of the painters will be featured in the, this exhibition in October. I'm thrilled to be a part of this, uh, of this particular show. Um, this is a continuation of a series. The, the paintings I'll be submitting is a continuation of a series called Reconciliation. There are two of the paintings, um, one called A Different Kind of Beauty and the other one, Jesus and an Angel. Um, they're basically excerpts of just basically a, a narrative that highlights views on religious constructs. A painting nearly takes roughly about 400 hours average to complete. Um, I employ models um, in order to support the narrative that is, that is that I want to communicate. I'm thankful for these models because they have bought into as far as the narrative and the, um, and the objectives that I want to communicate as well. Uh, this particular series is a continuation called Reconciliation. And um, these two paintings highlight that as far as the views on the religious constructs and how one adapts or relates to them from the particular lens of, of uh, women of color. Studying the old masters is basically uh, I received my uh, my lineage officially from there, um, from one of my, uh, or rather from a mentor of mine who was a living master, John Seibel's Walker. Uh, I'm a representational painter. And uh, it follows the, uh, this particular technique and style follows that of the old masters. Uh, and it goes back to the 17th century. I went to an atelier, an academy there in Boston. Um, it was my second academy um, that I'd been to, where I've, uh, I went to uh, continue my studies. And um, pending uh, completion there in a little, in a little while, I'm thrilled to even be invited to be a part of the uh, of the Portland Art Gallery family. I was introduced to it by way of a colleague, um, one of your managers there. Thank you for the support and um, the investment in these messages and how they have been um, in providing and, and getting them out there. Just thrilled to be able to share these paintings and be able to uh, discuss them with you. I look forward to meeting every, everyone who will be there and uh, thanks so much. And now I'd like to introduce artist Joanne Parent. Something we know a lot about here in Maine is that anytime you look at the ocean, rest assured that the, that the ocean is in fact looking back at you. Such is the case with the body of artwork first envisioned in the mind of Joanne Parent and realized on canvas. 
Growing up in mid-coast Maine, Joanne was surrounded by forests and coastal inlets, which provided an endless stream of inspiration that she would bring to a reality on canvas in the future. After high school, she was offered a scholarship at the Maine College of Art, but decided instead to travel around the world. Joanne had a calling for the sea, and in 1990, she set sail for nearly 10 years. Whilst traveling around the world, she worked in a number of different positions, such as a deckhand, a chef. She became an accomplished sailor and acquired her captain's license, all encircled by beauty. All while encircled by this beauty, Joanne continued to perfect her art. She replaced the pencil for a paintbrush, and when she returned to the Midcoast in 2000, she attended the Maine College of Art, and she has been creating beautiful works ever since. Please welcome artist Joanne Parent. Thank you, Emma, for the introduction. Uh, and everyone at Portland Art Gallery, it's always a pleasure. All the years, all the staff is fabulous. Just want to say that ahead of time. This inspiration has been in my mind for a while. We, you know, we all know that I paint big, luminous skies and light and sea and all of those things. But I wanted to kind of pare that down a little bit for this show and only do a little bit more of a minimalist palette, a couple of different palettes and kind of try to join those together somehow for the show. So I've been working on this show for about four or five months now, started off um, not really knowing how it was going to go as they, I never do know how they're going to go. But uh, I had some ideas and a lot of my paintings are done. Um, most of my paintings end up being just from my mind after I've taken my inspiration, got my composition, got my color palette, and I think it's gonna go one way and 90% of the time it goes a different way. So all of these paintings for this show have either been something I've been thinking about or uh, I have a photograph or two that I wanna try, someone has sent me maybe, or something that I've taken on one of my walks because a lot of my inspiration comes from me getting up early in the morning or me being there at twilight, my two favorite times of the day, and kind of vibing out what I'm seeing. And, you know, or in the middle of the night, sometimes I get up and I see something and I have to capture it with my phone. So uh, this painting was inspired by sea and sky with a minimalist palette idea. So I have a few that are are more silver tones, a lot of silver in the show, a lot of uh, calming, peaceful, ethereal. I want to convey the sounds and the feelings that I have when I'm out there, either standing on a beach or on a tidal estuary or, you know, uh, pulling off the side of the road in my car and I see something that I just can't not take a photograph of and paint it. So this show kind of reflects the different types of uh, feelings that I'm having when I'm taking the shot. I try to get those shots, put them on the canvas, whether it's all silvers with a little bit of gold, or I'm doing a little bit more of a darker, like some of my other works, a little bit more dramatic um, color schemes. Um, the work that I have in this show, I think kind of does unify all those things together. That's my hope. And uh, I feel like it's kind of transcended a little bit to um, a plane of kind of, um, I feel joy when I look at these paintings. I feel at peace with the universe when I look at these paintings. And while I was painting them, while there were some moments on some of them that were a little like frustrating, as we all know, when, as painters, um, I feel like I knew it was done when I felt that sense of like, there it is. There's that, there's that feeling that I want. So I hope you enjoy the show. Um, any questions? you have, I would love to uh, answer them if I see you at the show. Um, and I hope you enjoy everything. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to introduce artist Helen Lewis. Helen works predominantly with the pigmented beeswax, either in the form of encaustic or cold wax with oil. Both mediums involve building up many layers, then excavating, carving into, and highlighting certain portions of the surface. Helen loves the luminosity, the depth and textures that emerge when using these techniques. It allows her to capture the subtle nuances of color and texture, details that may reference an allusion to a place, an object, or simply a feeling. Elements and marks that speak of the passage of time, whether a weathered aging brick, peeling paint, an old script, an ephemera, lichen on stone, they are fascinating and beautiful 
and frequently inspire her artwork. Helen's creative process is an extension of her contemplative nature, which is evidenced in her finished pieces. Always she endeavors to convey a sense of peace and tranquility through her art, that same calm centeredness she finds along the main coast. Please welcome artist Helen Lewis. Thank you for that kind introduction, Emma. And thank you for all that you do on behalf of each of the artists at Portland Art Gallery, as well as all that Kevin Thomas, Emma McCold Burke, Missy Dunaway, Nikki Fontaine, and all of the staff do. This is a wonderful gallery, and I'm grateful to be represented here. For this October show, I have completed a new body of work in two of my favored media, encaustic and oil and cold wax. For anyone who may be unfamiliar with the medium, encaustic uses beeswax, damar resin, and pigment painted in layers on a wood substrate, with each layer fused into the previous layer using a blowtorch. The process for the oil and cold wax medium also uses beeswax and also involves building up many layers. However, with oil and cold wax, the beeswax is mixed with traditional oil paints and no torch or other heat source is used. With both mediums, I work intuitively and I love the depth and luminosity inherent in both, as well as the textured surface that emerges. With both, I not only build up layers, but also carve into, scrape back, and excavate in order to draw attention to certain areas of the work. I read just a couple days ago a statement from a professional photographer who said she pays attention differently when she's looking through the lens of a camera. I realize that is true for me as a painter also, both when I'm working at my easel and when I'm observing things around me and absorbing inspiration. I hope that it is true for those individuals who view my work as well. As a matter of fact, one of my paintings in this show is titled Paying Attention. Although I felt prompted to use that title because of a line in a French document, which is embedded in the wax of that particular piece. Many of the encaustic pieces in this show incorporate beautiful old papers dating back to the 1800s. In retrospect, the title Paying Attention seems even more appropriate as a general comment about what art can stir in us as both creator and viewer. First and foremost, I always want my work to convey a sense of peace and tranquility, and I hope that it causes you as a viewer to pause, to think more deeply about what you are seeing and feeling as you look at the work. I hope that it pulls you in to look closer and take in the delicate, quiet details to indeed pay attention differently to the painting in front of you and in turn to your life. Thank you for joining us for this virtual opening and for listening to my remarks and those of my fellow featured artists for the month of October, Rodney, Jill, and Joanne. I'm truly honored to be exhibiting with such talented individuals. If you are not able to come into the gallery to view the exhibit in person, I encourage you to walk through the virtual tour on the gallery website. And again, I thank you. And now I'd like to introduce artist Jill Hoy. A plain air oil painter, Jill earned a BFA from the University of California at Santa Cruz and also attended the New York Academy of Art in New York City. Her work has been included in numerous solo and group exhibitions around the country. Jill creates two bodies of work, one which is figurative and created in her studio, reflecting her imagination, and the other is a series of landscapes painted on plain air. Jill divides her time between Stonington, Maine, Somerville, Massachusetts, and New York City. The work she creates in Maine, specifically in this show, is inspired direct by direct observations of the landscape. It includes seascapes, architecture, and gardens. When Jill is working on location, she is especially interested in the effects of natural light, color, and pattern. Her iconic use of vivid color in the Maine paintings results in surfaces that are richly and intensely painted with images that seem to vibrate. Jill considers the quality of light to be an important element in her work. 
She says, the light in Maine is crystal clear with a sharp edged clarity and a gem like quality. As a result, her paintings capture the specifics of time and light. And because she's been a regular resident of the Deer Isle area since 1965, much of her work can be seen as a document of places and time in the area. Please welcome artist Jill Hoy. Hello. I want to thank Portland Art Gallery for being a terrific gallery. I've really enjoyed working with you and so innovative. So I've been excited about this show. It's full of plein air paintings that are in oil. I work outdoors on location. Some you may be familiar with if you've followed my work as far as tech, um, context goes, and many are new places to me. I've been working in Stonington, Maine quite a bit, and also the entire Blue Hill Peninsula. Other parts of it are from Cape, Cape Elizabeth, where I also enjoy working. The work is a lot about light, place, time, rhythm, a kind of gestural notation, which translates into the entirety of the image. It's a lot about vital energy that reflects this place, which is, in Stonington, we have one of the biggest landings of lobster in the country. It's a very hard driving working area and I think my work really reflects it. I've lived here since I was a kid. I know it very well. It's trained me as a painter, both to its tempo and its rate of change. So if I see something, I've learned that you really have to try to nail it right away because it's going to be gone the next time. You and I think the hardest things for me to paint are clouds, rock, and water, which are some of my favorite things to try to tackle. There are a number of really new investigations in this show looking into forests that are full of bramble and branches and space. So it's challenged me as well as my evolution as a painter is challenging me to come up with new ways of approaching this place. I'm very interested in the sense of time time movement and a kinetic quality that gives you a sense of being there. I'm just gonna move it a bit. This is the, um, the forest one, a fragment of it. I was going up to Skudik quite a bit this summer, both to teach and then fell in love with it and returned. Um, and it's pure wild nature aspect really touched me deeply and I enjoyed exploring it, beginning to explore it as a, as a painter. I also work in meadows and I'm a gardener. And so wild tiger lilies captivated me wherever I found them. I work in icons, sort of icons of the season and of the place, of the moment. A lot of these hold personal power to me, and hopefully you as well. That's it. I hope you come to see the show in person and have the, the vitality of it speak to you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for joining us for our October virtual opening. If you're in the area, we'd love to see you here at 154 Middle Street in the heart of the Old Port. We're open seven days a week, 10 to 530. You can also find us 24 seven at portlandartgallery.com. I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube station, Radio Maine with Dr. Lisa Belisle, where you will hear captivating conversations with our artists and members of our community. Until next time, be well, stay curious, and keep in touch. Thank you.